are your works. In wisdom you have made them all. The earth is full of your creatures. Yonder is the sea, great and wide. Creeping things innumerable are there, living things, both great and small. There go the ships and Leviathan that you form to sport in it. These all look to you to give them their food in due season. When you give to them, they gather it up. When you open your hand, they are filled with good things. When you hide your face, they are dismayed. When you take away their breath, they die and return to their dust. When you send forth your spirit, they are created, and you renew the face of the ground. May the glory of the Lord endure forever. May the Lord rejoice in his works. Who looks on the earth and it trembles? Who touches the mountains and they smoke? Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. Praise the Lord. Grace to you and peace and welcome to Hilltop Church on this Pentecost Sunday. We are so glad that the Holy Spirit has let you worship with us in this new way. And we are grateful for the work of the Spirit continuing in our lives. It is our tradition to have the announcements at the beginning of worship, so I do have a few announcements that I would like to highlight. The first is that you would have received in your email a request for toiletry items for Nourish New Jersey. They are collecting these much needed items for our friends. Um, and if you are able to provide a few extra toiletry items and bring them by Hilltop House, you can put them there as a bin right outside the door. And those will be collected uh, for the next few weeks. I'd like to thank all of you who have continued to support all of those in our congregation and also those who have continued to give financially during this time. Your continued gifts are crucial for Hilltop Church during this challenging season for all of us. So we ask that you, as you are able, continue to give to Hilltop Church, fulfilling your pledge, giving online, all the different ways that you can give of yourselves in many ways. And finally, a little bit later in worship, you will be able to see a lovely little piece of art uh, that has been created uh, by the work of our young people. They took some time, they made uh, designs, they got to express their creativity, and it's to show us that the work of the Holy Spirit comes to us in many different ways. So I will show you a close-up of it later, but look out for that. Uh, it will be a beautiful opportunity to see the gifts of our children and the gifts of the ways we are able to express ourselves, even during these challenging times. With all of that being said, let us turn our hearts and minds toward God the one who fills us with joy and peace and comfort and energizes us even in the most difficult times to make a difference in this world. Let us continue to worship. God calls us part of a community of disciples, part of a church family. God, God calls, calls us and, and asks, asks us to be ready. ready. Are we ready to worship, to listen, to think, to notice, God, God calls us. The living God calls us. Our God that was in every place and space before it was even built. Our God that dwells within us before we even notice. A God full of grace and forgiveness, challenge and choice. God who has as much to share with us now as at the dawn of time. So are we ready? ready to notice, to pay attention, to offer thanks and praise. Today we are ready to encounter God. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us worship.
who make mistakes. We fall short of the life that God intends for us. Yet God reminds us that there are second chances and the opportunity to start again. Trusting that God can redeem even the most challenging parts of ourselves, let us come before God in our unison prayer of confession, praying, Holy God, we confess this day how often we have tried to be your church without you. You come whispering peace while we hide in fear. You show us the wounds in your hands and side. We seldom suffer. You breathe the Holy Spirit upon your church and send us forth. We rely upon the strength of our own hand and stick close to home. Let the, Let the Holy Spirit, Spirit fall upon the places of our stubborn pride and our willful disobedience. Let the holy wind of your grace blow fresh at the corridors of our repentance. Let us be a people empowered by Pentecost, ready to start again. Amen. Absolutely nothing at all in all of creation, no words we have said or held back, no actions we have done or left undone. Nothing at all is able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Friends, believe the good news of the gospel. In, in Jesus, Jesus Christ, Christ we, we are, are forgiven. forgiven. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. continued word. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as of fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. 
all of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound, the crowd gathered and was bewildered, because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, Are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs. In our own languages, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, what does this mean? But others sneered and said, they are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them. Men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk as you suppose. For it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. And your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my spirit. And they shall prophesy. And I will show portents in the heaven above, and signs on the earth below blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please join me in a time of prayer. Holy Spirit, move among us. Speak to us. Help us to understand where you are moving. And to that end, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our rock, our strength, and our redeemer. Amen. Today is a fun day in the life of the church. We are finally to Pentecost after spending seven weeks solidly in Eastertide. Eastertide was fine. But it was a time when the disciples were dealing with the aftermath of Jesus' death and the confusion of the new church trying to figure out how to be church with a risen leader. Liturgically, we have been basking in the glow of Easter, Christ is risen, and celebrating with joy that fact and the fact that Jesus has defeated death once and for all. 
It is during the season of Eastertide that we tell the stories of what happened in those days that were immediately after the resurrection. We get stories of Jesus visiting with his disciples, breaking bread with them at table, cooking fish for them on a beach, allowing them to touch and see the scars that the world put on him. He was still there, teaching them as they went. He had been in and around and through the community until just recently, when he ascended to heaven. And when he ascended to heaven, things had to change. They could no longer operate the same way that they always had. With Jesus gone from their day to day, the disciples had to figure things out. They're trying a new thing. So all the new Christians gather together in Jerusalem during the Festival of Weeks, known as Shavuot. When they celebrate the harvest and the first fruits that are presented in the temple, it is one of the major festivals that drew in large crowds to Jerusalem. Jews from all over went there to celebrate this festival. There were people from across the Roman Empire and further away. And all these people, while they shared a faith, spoke different languages. Yet they all came to celebrate this festival together in Jerusalem. Immigrants and those who did not know everyone else, it was a place where there were insiders and outsiders who all believed and professed their Jewish faith. Some of those celebrating the festival would have been very new to everything. They would know very little about what was actually going on during their time. And in a way, they were just kind of along for the ride. It seems that this is very good timing for the Spirit to show up with such a large audience around. And it's interesting that there is a group of about 120 disciples going around and speaking in languages not native to their own. This small group of believers were gifted by the Spirit with the ability to share the good news <clears throat> in understandable ways to all the people they encounter. There's something different going on in this moment, this unique moment. Ever since Genesis and the Tower of Babel, people have been unable to truly hear and understand each other. And it has at times created big problems. It has led to misunderstandings, to abuse. With differences, there is always the temptation to assume that someone may not be worthy. With differences, there is the temptation to separate and keep away from others. With differences, there is the propensity to be knowers who are better than those who have no clue. But this story of Pentecost really opens our eyes to the way the Holy Spirit wants us to operate in the world. It shows us that the Spirit can gift us with the ability to speak in a way that others that do not know the gospel can understand. Essentially, the story of Pentecost is really a story about how God empowered a ragtag group of disciples from Galilee and the surrounding areas to be witnesses to the whole world. The Spirit descended and their abilities increased enough to make them understandable to those around them. 
the Spirit showed up and allowed them to show their faith to those around them. Even those who would have been shut out because of the different language they spoke. Sound familiar? So on this day, when we remember the breaking in of the Holy Spirit, we must spend some time examining what our Pentecost story looks like. I believe God is still calling us to speak in understandable ways to the world around us. That God is still empowering us to share the good news that Jesus Christ came to reveal God's love to the entire world. Our modern Pentecost looks a little different than those early disciples. Our translation, especially here in Mendham, New Jersey, may not be from one language to another. But what if it is from our church speak to something that those who have not been to church or have been hurt by the church or maybe under church can understand? There are so many people who do not know the good news of what Jesus Christ has done for them. There are people who do not understand that God is not a vengeful God. God does not send pandemics to torture humanity. God cares deeply for all of creation. God is not an imposing judge, but an understanding parent who desires hope and a future. As we experience our own Pentecost moment in this new, unique way, our language needs to reflect the truth that we have come to know in the restoring action of Jesus. How are we using the Spirit to tell the story? Are we sharing the undeniable love of Jesus to those who feel like the world has been cruel to them? Are we showing compassion and care when the world has abandoned another? Are we offering hospitality to all people, requiring nothing in return? Are we being faithful to the work that God is pushing us to do? Working to create peace and unity where there is division and difference? We know this to be true. The Spirit has come down. And the Spirit is still empowering us in creative ways. Are we daring enough to speak so that everyone can hear us? Are we willing to do the work of creating something new and inviting for all those who have been pushed away? With that in mind, I want to be clear, and I want you to remember, God loves you. Nothing you do can separate you from God's love. And if we are willing to give it a try, we can pass that great love on to one another. In Pentecost times such as these, we do our best and we trust that the Spirit is doing the work with us. Praise be forever and ever. Amen. If religion was a thing that money could buy, the rich would live and the poor would die. All my trials. Too late.
Please join me in a time of prayer. Gracious God, we bring our ordinary selves just as we are, inviting you to do something extraordinary in and through us. We have listened, we have noticed, we have paid attention to your calling, but we need your love. We need your grace and we need your Holy Spirit. Help us to understand that through you we are forgiven, that through you our hearts are stirred, that through you our ordinary becomes your extraordinary. Gracious God, we bring the whole world before you. We bring all the concerns and doubts we carry and lay them at your feet. We bring all the fears of our world, a world still uncertain about how we will emerge from this pandemic, a world where there is still much injustice and suffering, a world in need of you and of your love. Come among us. Come, gracious God. Come, Jesus Christ. Come, Holy Spirit. And hear us now as we pray together the prayer you taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
and in the power of the Holy Spirit, build a better world. In the name of Jesus Christ our Lord, amen. Yes. Yeah.